A Medicare law intended to save taxpayers money has had a year to find its footing. Here's the fallout. Some medical equipment suppliers are out of business and some Medicare recipients are out of luck. We asked Michael Hill to look into it. Michael, what have you learned? Mary Alice, the goal for the government was to save all of us billions of dollars, but getting there through this new way to bid for Medicare contracts for medical equipment seems to have created a lot of hardships, as in Jerry's Drugs in Bayonne having to cut salaries and lay off workers to stay in business. Jerry's Drugs in Bayonne used to supply Medicare patients with a wide range of products. With changes to Medicare, in order to continue supplying Medicare patients, the company had to submit bids. It won its bid to supply Medicare recipients with walkers and rollators. And now that's all Jerry's Drugs supplies through Medicare. To win one small group and to lose the rest of the business has been devastating for us. Business has been down. Uh, revenues have been down and cash flow has been drastically uh, reduced. And you won the bid? And we, we won the bid. Before this new bidding process, Jerry's Drugs charged Medicare $120 for this rollator. The store's gross profit, it says, was about $40. With the new bidding process, Medicare only pays Jerry's Drugs $70 for the item, dropping Jerry's gross profit, it says, to $15, if that, depending on delivery costs. Explain how you're losing if you won. Well, we've lost a lot of customers. So customers that were coming home from the hospital, uh, even the local medical center here, and they needed a hospital bed and a pressure mattress and a rollator to get to the bathroom. They get the rollator from us, the pressure mattress from somebody out in Brooklyn, and maybe the bed from somebody in South Jersey. When Congress and the second President Bush wanted to rein in Medicare spending, they looked at suppliers of medical equipment, demanding suppliers drop asking prices to win bids for a long list of durable medical equipment and beyond. Beyond, as in throat cancer victim Bob Walsh's cans and boxes of nutrition because he feeds through a tube in his stomach. I went for a week with no, no uh, feeding supplies. Bob says when the new bid contracts began last July, he got caught in the crack between the old supplier and finding a new one. He says he lived off water and Gatorade for a week until his old supplier, Twin City in South Plainfield, donated a box of cans. It took over a month before they even started bringing it. More than that, probably maybe two months. How could it take two months to give you what you need, your food? I had to go buy it and pay cash for it. $80, Bob says, with no reimbursement. And that's what a lot of Medicare recipients have had to do if they needed supplies and had to get them from a store that no longer had a Medicare contract for those supplies. Some stores have gone out of business. Others merged with a partner. For those still standing like Jerry's Drugs, the marketing director, Herb Passerman, has struggled with realities of the government saving taxpayers money. Uh, it's just, uh, it creates a general feeling of a depression. Medicare used to pay suppliers from a fee schedule, insisting it was overpaying for supplies. Now it says competitive bidding already has saved taxpayers $400 million in the first two years and projects that will grow to nearly $26 billion, Mary Alice, over the next 10 years. That's astounding. What's the future of this bidding process, though, given the problems that you just pointed out? It seems that the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Systems uh, thinks that everything is working okay. This new line, this third round, is supposed to go into effect in 2016. Uh, the Department of Health and Human Services just had an auditor's report done. It found none of the complications that we're finding in some of the stories. So it seems for a lot of the government, there's almost a blind eye and perhaps a deaf ear to some of the real issues, the realities of what's going on out there. What's Congress's role in all of this? Congress, of course, is the one that passed the law, and of course the president had to sign it into law. President Bush did back in 2003. The Obama administration has said that there were reasons for delays with this to really get started a couple of years ago. But it, again, when you're talking about the government goal of saving taxpayers millions, perhaps billions of dollars, Congress has even gone along with this. There were some senators last week who wrote a bipartisan letter to Health and Human Services and Centers for Medicaid and, and, and Medicare and said, look, we have this auditor's report, but we know the realities of what's going on, and you must find ways to fix this and save this program, perhaps, and save taxpayers and beneficiaries some money as well. And we'll monitor that. Thanks so much We're for being here on the set. Michael Hill. Thank you, Mary.